Hey, what's going on? This is Mike Mintz from Hope Magnet, and I'm here today to talk to you about a subject that I think a lot of us struggle with, and that's God. Regardless of where you hold, whether you think you're alcoholic, an addict, if you're just a person seeking to get well from something, or somebody who really just needs some hope, well, the fact remains that none of us really knows what to think about God. Um, sure, we, we have things that we've learned, things that we've picked up over the years. A lot of us have even formed some of our own ideas. But ultimately, when any of us come into contact with a self-imposed crisis, especially when it deals with addiction or alcoholism, we have to ruthlessly face the fact that we need clarity on what we believe. And it doesn't matter what that is. And so, in order to kind of get really clear on this, let's just take a look at the book Alcoholics Anonymous, which really serves as the basic text for many fellowships and many different problems around the world. Now, I know what you're saying before, before we get into it, and that's, well, they say higher power. And, well, I know what they really mean when they say higher power. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can get well regardless of what you think or believe about God, higher powers, whatever. And if you are struggling with this idea of higher power being a code word for maybe something that doesn't sit well with you, I'm going to ask you just to sit with me for a second and consider this idea. The life that we've been leading that has led us to seek help in a fellowship or maybe from a therapist or an institution that has brought us to the point where we're watching a video like this, that life was probably not working out as well as we had hoped. And so even if you are an atheist or an agnostic or completely just unsure of what's out there, I want you to think about using the term higher purpose. Because one of the things that a program of recovery can give us, regardless of what we believe, is this idea that there is a purpose out there. There is something out there that is more important, greater than just what we want for ourselves. And I think that that's an idea that doesn't offend the sensibilities of anyone, you know? And I'm not always one to really care about that, but hey, I want to help you guys. So that's something that I've used in the past, a higher purpose. Because trust me, even a guy like me, you know, who is living in you know in a religious lifestyle i've struggled with god too i've had times where i've just said he doesn't exist uh and you know again that's my struggle that's my experience and your experience is your experience so let's just look at what the book says i think it'll help so chapter four we agnostics it says in the preceding chapters you've learned something of alcoholism we hope we have made clear the distinction between the alcoholic and the non-alcoholic this is key you ready for this if when you honestly want to, you find you cannot quit entirely, or if when drinking, you have little control over the amount you take, you are probably alcoholic. Now, we talk about that in a step one guide that I have on hopemagnet.com, which you can download for free. The three requirements that I think are really pertinent for alcoholics and addicts or anybody struggling with a major life problem to be very clear on, and that's one, are you abnormal with the behavior that's hurting you? Two, even when you don't want to engage in the behavior, you find you engage in it anyway. And three, are you unable to both enjoy and control that behavior at the same time? That's basically what they're saying here. Now, here's the kicker. If that be the case, you may be suffering from an illness which only a spiritual experience will conquer. Notice they don't say God. They say spiritual experience. Now, before you discount that and say it's code, they mean God. Maybe they do, and they probably did. The guys that wrote this were Christian. They definitely believed in God. But they understood that in order to reach people and help people and to really have an effect on this world, we have to be open-minded. And if you're an atheist or an agnostic, again, that's all I'll ask of you is read some of these terms. And I, I know it's a lot to ask, but let's just keep an open mind. Because we're talking about life and death here in a lot of these cases. Let's just read the second paragraph. To one who feels he is an atheist or an agnostic, such an experience seems impossible, but to continue as he is means disaster, especially if he is an alcoholic of the hopeless variety. Now, how do you know if you're hopeless? Well, again, if you've met those three requirements, abnormality, no mental defense, can't control when I want to or when I don't, 
and I can't enjoy and control the behavior at the same time, I have no hope. That behavior is killing me. I'm hopeless. So it says, to be doomed to an alcoholic death or to live on a spiritual basis are not always easy alternatives to face. Now, I love this phrase, and it always reminds me of a, um, a cherished member of AA who was actually passed on in 2008. His name was Scott Redman. Guy really helped me. I never met him in person, but his tapes are available online, and he is an unbelievable speaker. He used to say that he had a, a sponsor or a friend who worked with somebody that when he read this sentence, the guy said, well, how bad of an alcoholic death are we talking about here? Now, if you've ever seen somebody die from alcoholism, it's not pretty. I mean, they turn yellow, the liver goes, they, it's disgusting. It is not a nice way to die. And yet, there are many of us who have chosen to go on and, and die in hospital beds or in car crashes or in suicides or in whatever, rather than change, rather than connect to other people, become a bit vulnerable, say we don't know. Put our lives out there on a spiritual plane and just try to live this life. And it is scary. Trust me, I know. I just experienced, I'm Jewish, I just experienced Yom Kippur, which is a day of atonement. And let me tell you, during this day, I had such anxiety, I, you know, because I had been back and forth with God all year. You know, the points where I said, I have, it's rubbish, it doesn't, it's a fantasy, it's not real. The points where I said, it's got to be real. And, and, you know, that's my struggle. And let me tell you, it's, it's hard stuff to reconcile. But I love what they say next, and I think this is the key for all of us. But it isn't so difficult. About half of our original fellowship were of exactly that type. They mean atheist or agnostic. At first, some of us tried to avoid the issue, hoping against hope we were not true alcoholics. So they're saying that the people who either didn't believe in God or higher powers or believe maybe there's something but it doesn't really work in our lives, that they just hoped maybe they weren't alcoholic and they didn't need to, to, to deal with this. But after a while, we had to face the fact that we must find a spiritual basis of life or else. Okay, and that's what we'll read. Now, just in closing, let me tell you, it's a, it, there's a lot going on here. You know, when we decide to do this 12-step experience, we decide to go on this road to recovery, to, to change, it's a difficult decision. It's not easy. And I think when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to any of the concepts of powers outside of ourselves, the important thing is to be open-minded and willing. And the willingness isn't doing the work. I think we can all agree that for us to grow, for us to change, so that we can then help other people change and get over the same problem that we once struggled with is a very worthwhile endeavor. So regardless of what you believe, if you're you know, a devout Christian, Jew, Muslim, Buddhist, whatever, or if you're an atheist, agnostic, you know, science person, whatever, we can all agree that there is a great big world out there. And that unless we are some megalomaniac or completely delusional and in need of institutionalization, that there are other people out there in the world that matter. And the trouble is that we've been living, and the book talks about it, on self-propulsion. We've been living completely for ourselves. And putting the drink down doesn't cure that. It doesn't change that. We could put the drink down, do step work, and then still fall back into selfishness. I do it daily. And the point is that if I live my life in selfishness, day by day, day in and day out, it becomes a very lonely existence. The trouble is not that I think too much of myself. I don't think I'm too great. It's not that I think too little of myself, that I think I'm this piece of junk and that no one loves me. It's I think too often of myself. And I can tell you guys that it's 100% true for me on a daily basis. And the work here, the seeking of this power, is to get out of that limited way of thinking. To start thinking a little bit more about the next guy. Giving someone else a call, seeing how they're doing. Asking my wife if there's anything I can do for her. Even though I want to do work in the afternoon, maybe seeing if my kids need something. That doesn't come naturally to me as an alcoholic. Now, I don't know if that's true for non-alcoholics. I believe it is to some degree. But I know for alcoholics, addicts, people struggling with real things that are just burdening us and bringing us down, it can weigh us down. The thoughts of our own troubles can become the burden and the chain and the wall that drags us to the pit of death. And what, it, what this idea of opening our minds and our hearts to power and purpose out there greater than our own and greater than our, our own selfish ends, what it can do is bring us to life. And that we can live a life and we can be propelled even when things seem impossible. And that 
is the message of hope that I want to leave you with today. Thanks for listening.